It's extremely important every day to make a heroic, determined endeavor to take shelter of Harinam Prabhu exclusively without any distraction at all. So we'll sit today just one hour, but it's better if you can do a few hours. If you come and stay with us in the Ashram in Vrindavan for a few hours every morning, but one hour will chant today. It's better if you are sitting and you have your spine is a little bit raised off the ground mm. because the spine should be straight. Otherwise, the prana, prana cannot flow and you'll tend to get sleepy. If you don't have good posture, you'll get sleepy. So it's not that yogic posture actually has any bearing in bhakti. But falling asleep does. <laughs> because in the early stages, before a strong taste develops in the holy name, there's a tendency to feel a tightness whenever there's a very pure spiritual activity. Then the mind just wants to shut off. Because by doing that activity, you will come completely out from the grip of maya, from material existence. So maya will do every, anything to prevent you from actually practicing that anger of bhakti properly. So try to be a little bit elevated and sit cross-legged like a statue without moving. And then completely take shelter of the holy names. Do we have the book, First Aid? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and, we have, and we have beads if anybody needs them. Well, we have Japa Malagi if you didn't bring your own. And if you, if you, if unfortunately you suffer from a case of sloppy Japa, <laughs> so we have written a book and it's, it's just coming now. It's called First Aid for Chanting the Holy Name. A cure and remedy for sloppy Japa. Uh, yeah. So then we will have, uh, should have, <laughs> so, <laughs> here it is, essentially, it's a, it's a verse which addresses 15 simple obstacles that devotees face, and these obstacles, they require just a little adjustment to overcome them. Many devotees don't know how to do it, and many years pass by without being able to experience real quality connection with the Holy Name during Japa. So I recommend for devotees, try to read this very carefully, you'll find it's very practical. And that many persons have experienced a complete transformation in their Japa just within a few days by trying to follow this. Patanjali, in his Yoga Suttas, you should first understand that the Bhakti Yoga is a type of Yoga. Hmm? How did Srila Vyasadeva realize the beautiful pastimes of Sri Krishna? Because his Guru Padapadma, Narad Rishi, gave him mantra and told him, go into Samadhi. So Bhakti Yogena Manasi Samya pranihite malay apasya purusha purusha purnam mayam chattar pasrayam. So then, Srila Vyasadeva, Bhakti Yoga in Amanasi, he went into the samadhi, the trance of Bhakti Yoga. Samya, samya, uh, samya pranihite malay means that his mind was pure because all the oscillations of his mind were completely arrested. And in that state of samadhi, of trance, he had darshan of the Purana Purush. Purush means the Krishna. But no, no one can be a Purush without a Prakriti. No one can be male without female. So he saw Radha and Krishna in his trance. So, it's important to understand when we are sitting to chant Japa, what is the project in which we are engaged. Otherwise, if we don't understand the nature of this project to which we are applying ourselves, then we'll just wander aimlessly. 
or think, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. So the project is to go through the stages of smaran, remembrance, dharan, concentration, and then into the state of dhyan, meditation. In the state of dhyan, the beautiful form of Sri Krishna will begin to appear, reflected on the stable chitta. On your stable mind, the form of Krishna will be reflected there. And then gradually, his qualities, associates, and one will go into the stage of Dhruva Anusmriti, very fixed, the continuous, uninterrupted remembrance. And then it will turn into Samadhi, trance. So this is where we want to go. Uh, through these stages. This is the project of Japa. When we sit down now, just switch off all the senses, eyes off, ears off, tongue, mature tongue, tongue off, smell off, touch off, all senses off, pratyahara. And letting go of everything and completely take shelter of Nam Prabhu, leaving behind this world. When you sit, you sit on the asana. This is your launch pad <laughs> to go to Goloka Vrindavan. So leave this body and mind behind here and offer your soul completely to Nam Prabhu. This is the project. So it's not possible by looking around here and there, talking and getting up and going around. It's not your, your rocket will stay on the launch pad. You will not go anywhere. So, be fully fixed and aware and focused on your project. The mm, psychology of the principles of yoga have been nicely described by Patanjali. He says that yoga chitta vritti nirodaha, yoga entails the complete cessation of chitta vrittis, the oscillations of the mind. So the same is said in Srimad Bhagavatam in regard to bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga in manasi samyak pranihite malay, the complete arrest of the chitta vrittis, the turbulence in the psychological body. Huh? So, Patanjali said, tada sarupe vasthanam when the mind is free from turbulence, then you automatically and naturally and intuitively experience being Atma, the soul. Otherwise, if the mind is not steady, then vritti swarupyam, itaratra vritti swarupyam, means if your mind is not steady, then whatever vritti is, whatever oscillations or modifications are coming in the mind stuff, in the chitta, then you'll identify with them. Itratra vritti swarupyam. You think that you are this mind. And then what happens? You begin to uh, participate in the internal dialogue of the mind. Hmm? The chattering and pattering of the mind. So chanting japa means Mano madhya istito mantro, mantra madhya istitam manaha, mano mantram samayakyam eta di japalakshanam. It's the definition of the symptoms of japa. That you put the mantra in your mind, and you put your mind inside the mantra. So you cannot do this with 3D things. If you have a big box, you can put a small box inside, but then you cannot put the big box inside the small box. It doesn't work. But the... the, the uh, consciousness and the Maha Mantra both beyond time and space, so this is not a problem. So put the mantra in your mind and then put your mind inside the mantra, Mano Mantram Samayuktam, and mix the two together that they become one. So there's absolutely no difference between the vibration of the holy name and the totality of your consciousness. No difference at all, nothing else exists. Now you've become free from Pratagdrasha. Bhagavad Maharaj was mentioning it yesterday. Pratagdrasha means the sense that there is any existence outside Sri Krishna. 
Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudullabha. A great soul realizes that Krishna is all and all and everything. And there is nothing there is no independent or separate substance. Bayam duti abhinivesatasyat ishat apetasya vipariya smriti. Our whole entanglement in material existence is just due to the uh duti abhinivesh absorption in the false idea that there is anything that exists independently or separately from Sri Krishna. So how to uh, become free from the duty abhinivesh, the absorption in this non-existent separate thing? Hmm? That is japa. Japa. Patanjali calls japa swadhyay. Swadhyay means self-study. Only a person who daily sits down to chant japa and tries to become absorbed in the name can study and find out exactly where they are in spiritual life. If you become absorbed in Nam Prabhu and your whole bodily identification just dissolves, then you can think that there's some you have a good amount of sattva. And if you sit there and the mm, the holy name is kind of mumbling on over there, but you are absorbed in some internal dialogue, mental chatter and patter. Hmm? Then you can understand you have now studied yourself and discovered that you are rajasic, down in the modes with the frogs and the toads. <laughs> <laughs> so, to give to participate. In the internal dialogue, the chattering and pattering of the mind while chanting Japa is called Nam Aparad. It's simply offense to the holy name. So one has to make a, um, a strong decision. Am I going to continue to make offense to Nam and thereby be completely bereft of his mercy? Or am I going to surrender? So in the beginning, it's difficult. And therefore, it's essential to sit still and be persistent. One hour, two hours, three hours. And then once one has the experience that the mm, oscillations of the mind and the chattering of the mind become peaceful and quiet, and you begin to have the abhiman, identification with your soul, rather than the external material energy, then this makes a samskar, an impression. And even if you experience that only for a few seconds, then that impression is very powerful. I want to experience it again. So then every day you're doing your swadhyay, your internal study, hmm? and trying to experience, perhaps you can experience it for five seconds or ten seconds. After some time, you'll just sit down to chant japa and go directly into that state very soon. Because the, the samskars of the... Dhyan, that means the impressions of the being in the state of Dhyan accumulate and they overpower the impressions of being in the state of Dehatma Buddhi, thinking that the self is the body. Hmm? If you hold a red rose next to a crystal, then the crystal uh, becomes the tinged with a rose hue. This rose hue is not part of the crystal, yet it's tinged with the rose hue. So this is an example of the adhyas, superimposition of upadi, a designation. There are two things. Upadi means a designation, and when that designation is superimposed upon something which is distinct from itself, that's called adhyas. So you should know that your whole idea of who you are, your ego, uh, <coughs> I am Sriti, I am Ananda Gopal, I am Subal, that this is a, a upadi, a designation. You are none of these things. Mm? And this upadi, which is composed of the mature energy, is adhyas. It is a superimposition on your consciousness. You are Atma. You are an eternal being. Beyond time, beyond space. And part and parcel of Sri Krishna, Supreme Lord. 
and your home is Goloka Brindavan. Hmm? But now there is the Adhyas, the superimposition of Upadi, of a material ego. Hmm? So we want to go um, beyond that, become free from that Upadi. Only in the state of being free from that Upadi, then we can actually render Bhakti. Because the definition of bhakti is sarvupadi vinir muktam, vinir mukta, completely free from all upadi. Tatparatvena hmm? nirmalam, and tatparatvena, tatpara means an absorbed in Krishna, nirmalam, with a pure heart. Rishikesha, hmm? rishikena, sevanam bhakti uchra, then one engages transcendental senses in the service of Rishikeshi Krishna, the master of the senses. Hmm? Bhakti Uchate, this is called Bhakti. Hmm? So it is essential. Every morning, try to apply oneself. Unless one applies oneself daily with great persistence, then the actual experience of Nam Bhajan, it will not become available. Hmm. So to attain this, one should be mm, avoid worldly association and mundane talk. Because the discussion of mundane things creates more and more unsteadiness of the mind. You see, this is why Narun Muni chast chastised Vyasadeva in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, you've written so many things in the Vedas and Puranas and Mahabharata, which are not directly about Krishna. It's essentially... Really, the Gramya Kata, Prajalpa, because you spoke about Dharma, how to do your duties in order to go to heaven and enjoy sense gratification in heaven. Or about Mukti, how to totally ignore God forever. Hmm? All these things you've discussed, and these subjects which are separate in vision from Sri Krishna, make the mind unsteady. Hmm? Tatanyata kinchana yadvi vakshita pritagdrisha statkrita rupa nama bihi na kaichit naiva cha dushtita mati labeita vatahata nauri vaspadam. O Vyasadev, Tatanyata kinchana yadvi vakshita, whatever you want to describe, pritagdrisha, which is separate in vision from me. Then that causes the dushtita mati, naka naiva cha dushtita mati. It makes your mati, your chitta, do, do stitha. Stit means fixed and do stitha means not fixed. Hmm? In, a, in a state of, and a do is something contemptible. In a contemptible state of oscillation. Hmm? So as long as that state of oscillation is there, then nakai chit naiva, there is no chance whatsoever of experiencing samadhi or trance. And one's whole life is what? Labeta vata hata nao ivaspadam. You are simply like a boat with no, no steering mechanism, just being blown around the material world by the wind of a mental speculation. So in this verse, it's very, actually all the verses are like this, they're exquisite, they're so elegantly composed, every single word is so precise and scientific and uh, descriptive in the most vivid way. So try to go into the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, it's astonishing. So our entire problem and solution is just there in a few words of Sri Narada Rishi. Mm -hmm. So try to chant the japa like this, very nicely every day. And if you'll be persistent, after some time, you'll be successful. Sila Bhakti Nortakur in Harnam Chintamani, he said, no one ever experienced Nam Bhajan who did not first go through a colossal struggle. Hmm? So you have to sign up. Huh? You have to sign up for that. We're very much attached to comfort and uh, being at ease, relaxation. 
We don't want to be engaged in a colossal struggle. But every day when we sit down to chant Japa, then one has to be courageous and know that one has taken this responsibility of this project. By receiving Harinam from Guru, you have accepted this responsibility. So if you don't apply yourself with great dip discipline and persistence daily, then one is shirking one's responsibilities to Nam and to Guru, to Krishna. And uh, then what can we say? Material existence will go on without respite. So, another important thing is the mind is extremely powerful. And the soul, the conditioned souls who are covered with anartas are very weak. And therefore, they cannot generate the momentum and determination to engage deeply in relationship with Nam Prabhu. And therefore, Sadhu Sangha is necessary. Unless we come into the association regularly, and or as much as we can, with those who have realization of the Holy Name, eh, then we'll be weak, we'll be flabby, we'll be a kind of couch potato of the world of bhajan. <laughs> hmm? Without the strength of determination, and the, the grit which is required to uh, follow the path of Nam Bhajan. So it's very important. And by good association, and by serving Guru and pure Vaishnavas, by their blessings, gradually our heart will become steady, and we develop the momentum and the determination to follow this path of Nam Bhajan that was described by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaito Darpana Marjanam Bhava Mahadavagni Nirvapanam Suryakairava Chandrika Vitaranam Vityavadhu Jeevanam Anandam Buddhivardhanam Pratipadam Poonam Ritasvadhanam Sarvatma Stapanam Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankir. The cleansing of the heart, the complete state of peace that comes from transcending the physical plane, the fire of material existence. And then the opening of auspiciousness, the blossoming of the heart, and the appearance of one's spiritual form. And then anandam buddhi bahadanam pratipadam ponam mitasa. At every step, the nectar of Krishna's service. Krishna prem udgama prema mrita ashvadhan. Krishna prapti sevam mritas samudre madjan. When Mahapu explained this verse, Chaito Ujjapra himself, he said, then the spontaneous love for Krishna will rise up in the heart like an ocean. Mm. And one will taste the nectar of direct service to the divine couple. One will attain Krishna and Seva Amrita Samudra Madjan and become immersed completely in the ocean of the nectar of the Sri Radha Krishna's Nibrita Nikunja Seva. Mm. This morning was, uh, everyone came together to see the Mangala Arti. Mangala means auspicious. If you don't begin the day with a Mangala Arti, then your day will not be auspicious. But if you begin the day with a Mangala Arti, then everything will be Mangala. What is Mangal auspicious for the living being? Rati. One's foundational emotional relationship with Krishna. That is called Rati. That is when you see in Shastra the word Mangal or Sreya or Kalyan auspicious in Shastra, it is actually a synonym of Rati. Because the only thing which is auspicious for a living being is realization of his eternal relationship with Krishna. Mm -hmm. So, Arati means, Arati, A means coming, Arati, Rati is coming. Mm. <laughs> and that is Mangal. <laughs> Mangal Arati. So, the song that we sing was very mostly composed by our 
Si si le Bhakti Pradhan Keshav Goswami Maharaj. And very kindly is written in beautiful poetry the meditation for our morning absorption. First, Mangala Sri Guru Gaura. What is auspicious? Our auspiciousness begins when we remember Sri Guru. Sri here means the mm, treasure, the wealth. So Sri Guru means that Guru who is in possession of the wealth of Krishna Prem can be called Sri Guru. Hmm? Otherwise you can have a Guru of dancing or a Guru of cooking or a Guru of music, whatever. Hmm? Guru means teacher. But Sri Guru, Sri Guru Chanana Padma. Sri Guru means the Sadguru, the eternal transcendental Guru, who is the Patra, the receptacle of Prema Rasa. And Guru also here means not only the Vyasti Guru, your individual Guru, but the Samasti Guru, the Akanda Guru Tattva, the original undivided principle of Guru, that is Nityananda Prabhu. So Mangala, Sri Guru, Gaura, remember Guru and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mangala, Murati, and the Mangala here, Murati means Murti. The auspicious forms, Mangala Sri Radha Krishna Jugala Priti. The auspicious forms of Brajendra Nanda and Shama Sunda, Gopinath, Radha Pran, Sri Krishna, and his most beloved Vrishabhanu Nandini. Remember their divine forms. Hmm? And Mangala Sri Radha Krishna Jugala Priti, pretty, the love between them and the love that their sakis and manjuris, their maidservants have for them and the love that they have for, for their sakis, their friends and maidservants. This is the first. First of all, remember all the good things in life to begin the day. Then, Mangala Nishanta Olila Mangala Udaye Remember the auspicious Nishanta Lila. So here Nishanta has two meanings. Nisha means night and Anta means end. So Nishanta means the end of night. So the first general meaning is that Yani Shasava Bhutana Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, what is night for the materialist is day for the devotee. And what is the night for the devotee is day for the materialist. That means a materialistic person means running around trying to fulfill their endless and worthless material desires by which they find no true happiness but experience only embarrassment, misery and dissatisfaction followed by death. Huh? Uh, they think this is really to be awake and to be alive. Huh? But the devotee sees that <laughs> Atma is snoring. Soul is completely asleep in, in ignorance. Hmm? Uh, but that materialistic person is looking at the devotee sitting, chanting. What is he doing? Sleeping. Wasting his time. Time is money. And this time is going by. He's not making any money at all. Just this. Snick, snick, snick. <laughs> so the materialist thinks the devotee is sleeping and the devotee thinks the materialist is sleeping. Hmm? Who is right? The devotee is right. Hmm? The materialist is thinking he's doing so many productive things, he's doing nothing. Why? Because whatever comes from his activities was already fixed by the karma of the previous life. So he's literally doing nothing. Hmm? If he builds a big empire, a big business, whatever it is, he didn't do anything. It was the karma from the past life activity. But he's thinking, I am doing so much. Out of false ego, he thinks, I am the doer of the activities, which are actually being carried out by Prakriti, the three gunas. 
Who is doing nothing, sleeping, wasting his time? And the devotee is sitting and chanting Harinam. They are... Hmm? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Roy Ramananda, who is the greatest capitalist? Roy Ramananda said the devotee of Radha and Krishna. Hmm? Like my Gurudev, when he quit his job in the police force, the police commissioner asked him, what are you going to do? He said, it's a business. <laughs> what kind of business? That business where there's all profit and no loss. <laughs> <laughs> so those who are doing bhakti, really, they are very, very intelligent. Why? Because they take this material body, uh, which is worth nothing. Hmm? You know this body, there's some calcium, some carbon, a bit of oxygen, and a few other trace elements. If you add up the total cost of them, it comes to about $2.60. <laughs> hmm? So the devotee is taking this material body, which has no value, and he's using it in Krishna's service, and he's attaining eternal life and happiness, and Krishna becomes his property. So you get something which is worth nothing, and make, turn it into that which is priceless. Mm -hmm. So the devotee is really engaged in the profitable endeavor. Mm -hmm. So here, Nish Mangala Nishanta Lila, how auspiciousness, how auspicious it is that a soul who was sleeping for so many lifetimes has now come to the path of bhakti. And the fact that you woke up in the morning and came to Mangalartic and you're doing kirtan with all the devotees means that your night time of many lives in the darkness of Maya is now coming to an end and the spiritual life is entering into one's existence. Huh? So it's very, mon very mangal, very auspicious. So mangala nishantalila and the second meaning of nishantalila is of course that Radha and Krishna's pastimes are going on 24 hours a day and it's divided into eight sections and it begins from 3.36 in the morning 3.36 to 6 o'clock. This period is called Nishantalila, the end of night. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the Mangalartic is actually a meditation on Radha Krishna waking up in the Kunj, Sanket Kunj. And then, uh, their beautiful pastimes together and the service is rendered by the Sakis. And then they separate and they return to their, to their homes. So it's a very bittersweet moment where they're together. There's meeting, but there, there's also the, the inevitable, impending separation to come just very soon because the, the sun will not slow down in the sky, it just keeps moving up by degrees and causing them to be separated. So for this offense of separating lovers in the morning, they all cursed him. And by that curse, he developed leprosy and his legs fell off. That's why you see the sun can move in the sky, but he has no legs. Because of the curse of the older lovers who criticize him. So, Mangala Nishantalila Mangala Uday. Mangala Harati Jagi Bhagata Ridoy. It means May this auspicious Mangalati awaken in the hearts of the devotees. Hmm? We are not practicing Krishna consciousness to be forever in a state of no anubhav, realization, anubhuti. Hmm? We are searching for realization. And so in Mangalati we are praying. Oh, oh Guru, oh Goranga, oh Radha Krishna, sprinkle your mercy upon me that this beautiful scene of Radha Krishna's waking in the morning, the Mangal Arti, will rise up in my heart. At the time of the pralai, the destruction of the universe, all the living entities are sleeping within inside the body of Mahavishnu. Hmm? <coughs> They're in a state of suspended animation. But when Mahavishnu wakes up and it's time for the creation, hmm, then all the living entities wake up and go around about their, about their business. But the reason the Supreme Lord wakes up the creation 
is because he's feeling separation from those uh, devotees who in the previous creation had developed bhakti but had not become perfect yet. So that's why God, uh, by his glance, uh, stimulates the prakriti to manifest the world and to manifest bodies for those devotees so that they can continue with their sadhana and perfect their love and come directly to Sri Krishna's lotus feet. So the cause of the creation, the very reason for existence, the very reason, the glance of the Lord is the time, sorry, the uh, halo of the glance of the Lord is Kal Purush, time itself. And so his glance, which instigates the creation, time, is an expression of Krishna's love for his devotee. So you should know the only reason that the finger is moving on the clock is because of Krishna's love for his devotee. The only reason why there's a past, a present and a future and you're moving through time, that is a current only of Krishna's love. That's why we exist, that's why everything exists. So Krishna creates out of love for his devotee and incidentally all those who are not devotees also get bodies according to their past karmas. Hmm? So this is the, the first meaning of, of this line. When Supreme Lord wakes up, he, he uh, causes the, he instigates Prakriti to let loose the whole creation. And the purpose of it is only for love. <laughs> and then the more esoteric meaning, Tomarani Draya Jiva, oh my Lord, your Jiva, your life and soul is held in your arms. Hmm? That is in the early morning. Radha Krishna uh, sleeping in a Nikunj after very energetic dancing in Rasalila the whole night. Hmm? And now they're embracing each other. Hmm? So then the devotee prays, our Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaraj is praying, Shubha Drishti Koro Prabhu Jagatera Prati Jagu Kari Doya Mora Sumangalarati O Prabhu, O Krishna, wake up and open your beautiful lotus eyes and glance upon me, that your Kripa Shakti, which is carried by your glance, will awaken in my heart the auspicious Rati, the Stai Bhav, Bhav, Shuddha, Sattva, Visheshatma, Prema Suryangsu Samyabak, Ruchi Bischita Masranyakida, so Bhav Uchite. So this is why we become, we come before the deities, primarily not to see the deity, but so that Krishna will look at us. Because Krishna, if Krishna will glance upon us, then in his merciful glance is such a shakti, it awakens our foundational emotion, loving relationship, stahi hmm? So now, this uh, song makes a shift from the bahya dasha, external consciousness to internal consciousness. So we're following Srila Bhakti Pragya and Keshav Goswami that first he's waking up in the morning and chanting Japa and he's praying to Radha and Krishna and as he prays Jaguka Ridoya Mora Sumangalarati Oh my Lord, by your merciful glance awaken the Rati in my heart and then he goes from the external consciousness into Antardasha, internal consciousness. So when you lose the external consciousness and go into the internal state of consciousness there you will see, you are on the bank of Jamuna, hmm? in the beautiful kunjas, in the divine enchanting forest of Brindavan. And the first thing you become aware of is, Mayura Sukadi Sari Katapit Karaj, the singing of the birds in the forest, the call of the peacocks, the sound of the parrots and the uh, pikaha uh, and cuckoo birds. Very sweet. Mm -hmm. So at that point, when we begin to sing Mangalati, we were singing in a folk melody. Hmm? And then when we transition into internal consciousness, then we sing in classical raga. Katapikaraja 
मंगलाजकार हेतु करी चे विराज बायरव राग व्हिच इज द सूटेबल राग फॉर द द एटमॉस्फेयर ऑफ द प्री डॉन एटमॉस्फेयर ऑफ ब्रंदावन सो राधा एंड कृष्णा are uh, held in a very tight loving embrace and they're sleeping but seeing that soon the sun will come so brinda devi becomes very anxious that if radha and krishna don't quickly return to their homes then they'll be seen by the other people who wake up and they'll go around their business they'll be moving on the paths and they'll see them coming from the forest and there'll be a huge scandal in braja <laughs> so in order to conceal the parakia the um mm, we can say the trans and ethical relationship of radha and krishna <laughs> <laughs> the relationship which is outside the purview of the dharma of society then brinda devi the goddess of the forest of brindavan she knows very well here she is <laughs> Brenda Devi thinks I have to wake up Radha Krishna but in a sweet way not in an abrupt way which has no rasa beep, 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 beep. <laughs> like your alarm clock <laughs> but in a very sweet and beautiful way so she orders the birds the parrots the peacocks the cuckoos to sing hmm? and that gentle sound will awaken Radha Krishna from their slumber hmm? so then at that time Aparam Gurudev is saying Sumadhur dhwani kare jata saki kana mangala sravane baje madhur ko jana So the general meaning is Sumadhur dhwani there's a very sweet sound hmm? jata saki gan in the the saka that means the branches of the trees the birds in the branches of the trees are singing madhura kujan sweetly warbling and those sounds combine together to make such a auspicious beautiful atmosphere so this is the general meaning then another meaning is that the sounds of the birds are full of dwani that means implied meanings or saki gan does not refer to the branches but it means that at that point when the birds begin to sing then rupa manjari rati manjari kamala manjari naina manjari ramana manjari they they have just rested after radha and krishna have gone to sleep they serve them for some time giving massage and then they come out from the kunj and lie down there on in the courtyard of the kunj and when they first hear the birds then they wake up with anxiety why because they savor bhriti they always want to serve and they think ah did i oversleep hmm? Hmm? and they sit up surprised and look around what time is it have i overslept and missed my service opportunities before radha and krishna wake up i'll have to collect all the things which are necessary hmm? and that's your arti paraphernalia right before mangalarti you have to have your tray you have to have some water some cloth some incense and all the other things so then and then they realize oh it's okay it's not, <laughs> the anxiety goes down a little bit it's not too late radha krishna is still sleeping and they wake up and along with their guru rupasaki they make their way towards the gavaksh gavaksh means the lattice work of the windows of the um, uh, kunj griha the cottage in the forest and they put their eyes against the lattice and peep inside and there they see radha krishna in in the embrace at that time they begin to talk to each other hmm? one manjri says to hasaki you know that if a bumblebee is trapped inside a bamboo he's so strong he can he can cut through the hard knot of the bamboo even and escape yet the bumblebee hmm, if he comes into lotus flower and in the evening the lotus flower closes he cannot get out 
from the soft petals of the lotus flower. Yeah. And hearing this, the other, other Manjuis are laughing, giggling, softly, a little bit subdued and reserved at that time in the morning. Hmm? <laughs> Why? Why? Why are they laughing? Because Suma Dura Dwani Kari Jatra Sakhi Gan. Dwani. Do you understand? Govinda Dasi, do you understand? What does it mean? Hmm? Can you explain? A bumblebee can cut its way through the hard knot of bamboo, but cannot get out of the soft petals of a lotus. So the lotus explained that bhakti is about love, that's why. Mm. <laughs> 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 Little bit vague. Right, but thank you. The word dwani means the implications of poetry. Just like if you say in Sanskrit, Gangayam Goshaha means the village on the Ganges. So if you take Abhidabriti, the dictionary definition, the village on the Ganges, it makes no sense because you cannot build houses in the middle of the water. So then you cannot use the Abhidabriti. You have to move to the Lakshanabriti. Lakshanabriti means the power of the words, the semantic power of the words. Uh, not directly, but something associated with their direct meanings. So Gangayam Gosha, the village on the Ganges, means the village on the bank of the Ganges. Because the, the bank is something associated with the Ganga. So you have to take the Lakshan Briti. But sometimes the Lakshan Briti also doesn't have a relevant meaning at that point. Hmm? So then you have to take the next level of semantic power, and that is called the Vyanjambriti, or Dwani, Dwani, the implied or suggested meaning. So perhaps someone asks you, oh, I want to visit your house, how can I go there? And the person replies, Gangayam Gosha, my village is on the Ganges. So those are the words, but the implied meaning is, if you want to visit me, you can come by boat, because my house is on the river, so you can come by... So he's not saying you can visit my by boat, but the words, the village on the Ganges, actually that's what it means. By Dwani, by Vyanjambriti. So he assumes Madura Dwani Kori Jata Sakigan. Does not only mean that the birds are singing and the sound, the Dwani means sound, hmm? but here it means that the birds and also the Sakis, the maidservants of Radhika, they are speaking with each other, and the Dwani, the implied meanings of their, of their poetry, is sumadur, excessively sweet. Mm. 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 So when she says that the bumblebee can cut through the hard knot of a bamboo, but cannot escape from the soft petals of the lotus flower, the meaning is this. Krishna is very strong. Mm -hmm. And he was held in the tightly by the coils of Kaliya Nag. But Krishna is Kaliya Daman. All the names of Krishna are full of rasa. Hey Kaliya Daman. Hmm? But the rasa comes from the Dwani. Hmm? Krishna Kaliya Daman. That means you were held so tightly by the, by the embrace of Kaliya, but he could not hold you. You broke free. But you cannot break free from the soft embrace of my Swamini Shimati Radhika. Kalyadaman, hmm? how strong are you? <laughs> because when the bumblebee goes in the lotus flower, he drinks nectar, and that nectar makes him become so intoxicated and so blissful that when the petals close, he can't be bothered to get out. <laughs> He's happy there, he doesn't want to go anywhere else. <laughs> so, the dwani of the words of the Sakis is, oh, just see, how strong. Krishna today was wrestling with the coward boys. He defeated so many coward boys. Sometimes Sri Dham would have him in a tight grip. But Krishna would easily escape from his strong arms. But just see, Krishna cannot escape from the ten slender, tender arms, the embrace of my Swamini Shimati Radhika. So, Suma Dura Dwani Kori Like this, they're all peeping inside and talking to each other, but never directly. Brajabasis. Never speak directly. Hmm? If you speak directly, this is in this um, prosaic habit. Then it means that the love is, when the love is there, 
Love is always expressed indirectly, never directly. So, my Dwara Dhani Kari Chacha Sakhi. Gradually, Radha and Krishna, they open their eyes and they sit up. But when they sit up, then Krishna's hair is entangled in Radhika's nose ring. And Radhika's hair is entangled in Krishna's earring. They're kind of... And they're too sleepy and their eyes are rolling from tiredness to figure out how to get out of this bondage. <laughs> hmm? Gopi say, oh, Mukunda. Balo Hari Hari Mukunda. Murari. Mukunda means who frees everyone from bondage. But Krishna wakes up, he kind of, he's <laughs> happy. Hey, Mukunda. <laughs> you see? How old the names of Krishna, they're so full of rasa. But the rasa is not in the direct meaning. In the dhwani. Sumadhura dhwani kari. Bolo hari hari mukunda murari. Rama Krishna hai agri. Perhaps on another day we'll go through that whole song. <laughs> so, then the Manjari see, oh, our service is needed. Rupa Manjari, Rata Manjari, they go into the kunj. It's very, it's somewhat dim, dimly lit inside the kunj, but the effulgence of Radha Krishna is making Krishna's golden, Krishna's sham effulgence like a Sapphire is mixed with Radhika's golden effulgence, and their two effulgences are making a beautiful green aura in the forest. That's why the forest is green, because of the union of Radha and Krishna. And they sit up, and the maidservants with their nimble fingers quickly untie the entangled orna hair and ornaments. And then they see that on the lips of Sri Krishna, there is the eyeliner of Radhika. On the mm, body of Radhika, there is the sandalwood paste of Krishna's decorations that melted with his perspiration and dripped onto the body of Radhika. And on the body of Krishna, there is the kumkum from the body of Radhika that dripped onto the body of Sri Krishna. There are stains on the cheeks of Radhika from Krishna's chewed tumble. So in this way, Radha Krishna are completely decorated in all the sambhog chin, the signs of their loving pastimes. Huh? This is the success of decoration. <laughs> Rupa Goswami said, Mdhamodarati Vardhanaveshe Hari Nishkutabri I have decorated Radhika from head to toe. <clears throat> with all types of the cosmetics and ornaments. But those cosmetics are not successful until they've melted and dripped and become spattered on the face of Krishna. Then the, those decorations have become <laughs> successful. Hmm? <laughs> Why? Because... Hmm? Saki bina e lila pushti na hiai Saki lila vistariya saki ashwadai The pastimes of Radha Krishna cannot be nourished without the Sakis. The Saki, without the Sakis, their pastimes cannot be expanded. And, and the Sakis themselves are the tasters of these pastimes. So without Lalita Vishaka, Chitra Champakalata, without Rupa Manjari, Ratya Manjari, Radha and Krishna, they cannot experience happiness even for one second. The Sakis are essential. Hmm? Shanamapi nahirada krishnaya yo yarateswa. Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami. Not one second can they feel happiness without the assistance of the Sakis. Huh? But uh, only the Sakis, Saki Bina Elila Pushtina Hiai. This Leela cannot go on without the Sakis. So everything in this Leela is a Saki. Some of the Sakis are internal in the form of emotions. For example, when Radhika sits up and she sees and she remembers what happened the previous night. Then one Saki comes, Laja Saki, the sh Saki of shyness. Hmm? And she takes over the mind of Radhika. So the emotions, the bhavs are also Sakis. The ornaments are Sakis. 
Mm? The cosmetics are also sakis. Mm? So it is said, Pranayama yavayasya kunjaranda pitaksi shititalamanu labdananda murcham patanti pratirata vidhano chestita chitra chitra smarani britani kunje radhika krishna chandro. Oh my dear mind, remember in a very solitary, secluded bower in the forest of Vrindavan, Radha and Krishna are together. At that time, Pranayamaya Vayasya, they're friends of the same age. Hmm? They're coming, Kunja Randra Pitakshi, and offering their eyes to the lattice windows and looking inside. Pratirata Vidhano, and when they see the mutual exchange of loving pastimes between Radha and Krishna, Chittita Chitra Chitra, which are so artistic and astonishing, then, hmm? Now they feel that their life is success. They have re arrived at the destination of their whole life's purpose, beholding the beautiful pastimes of Radha and Krishna, and being filled with the ananda, the overflowing ananda coming from Radha and Krishna. Then murcham patanti, they faint and fall to the ground. And now they cannot move and go anywhere, because they've arrived at their destination. And they fall unconscious in ecstasy to the ground. So, because the ornaments, because the cosmetics of Radha and Krishna are also sakis, when those sakis reach their destination, they faint and they stay there. So, the kajal saki, that means the saki of Radhika's eyeliner. When she arrived at her destination, the lips of Krishna, she fainted, so she stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> when the kumkum saki on the breast of Radhika <laughs> melted and dripped onto the chest of Sri Krishna, then that kumkum saki, be, oh, I've reached my destination, fainted. <laughs> <laughs> so she's still there in the moon. <laughs> so in this way, their the ornaments and their cosmetics are like sakis. And they fainted in ecstasy when they arrived at their destination. Oh, now my life is successful. But the problem is that Radha and Krishna cannot go home being decorated in the Sambhog Chin. Hmm? So they'll have to be hmm, uh, removed. And that's why the Pujari in Mangalati is coming with the water and the cloth. Hmm? So first she puts the water in the conch. That means the maidservants are coming and putting some Mm, fresh, fragrant water on the bodies of Radha Krishna and taking it across and wiping away the Sambhog chin. Mm -hmm. But as they wipe away, as, this, as these chin are the signs of Sambhog meeting, then as they're being wiped away, that means it's as if they are erasing the pastime itself. Mm. And it's awakening the Vipralamba Bhav. When the Sambhog chin is wiped away, when meeting is wiped away, then you are left with separation. Mm. This is the bhav of Mangalartik. Mm. Uh, so the devotees are watching the arti and seeing the offering of the water, the offering of the cloth, like this. And the nectar of the union is being wiped away. And the pain of separation is rising up in the heart. Uh, Radha Krishna come out from the kunj and they sit down on a beautiful Ratnavedi, a platform of jewels. At that time, some of the Sakis and Manjuris, they go into the kunj huh, to collect the Mahaprasad. Huh, the drops of chewed tambul of Radha and Krishna. This is Mahaprasad. Huh, and because their necklaces were broken and jewels and pearls were scattered here and there, they have to collect them and restring those ornaments. Hmm? So for that, they'll have to come to the bed and find, look, search for the jewels here and there. Uh, while they're searching, then some parrots who were in the kunj, you know, it's the nature parrots, they just repeat what they heard. <laughs> so as they're collecting the jewels, they hear one parrot is... Female parrot is saying to the male parrot, not only repeating what you heard. 
Hmm? <laughs> oh, mm, don't. That hurts. I am not Hirani Kashipu. <laughs> <laughs> so like this, Suma Dura Dwani Kori Jata Saki Gan. Even the birds, they are speaking. Hmm? The words of, of the heroine. And when the, the, the maidservants who are collecting the jewels hear, then the Dwani, that is the implication of the word spoken by the parrots, uh, fills their heart with the visions of Radha Krishna's beautiful pastimes. Hmm? I am not Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> so, <clears throat> at that time, Lalita Saki and Brinda Devi come into the kunj. And Lalita Saki sees the bed of flower petals and they become crushed in the middle. And where the petals are crushed in the middle, hmm, there is the, uh, it is, they are tinged with the chandan, sandalwood paste. Hmm. And on each side, hmm, some petals are crushed and they are tinged with a foot lac. Hmm. And in this way, Lalita Sakis experienced this purity of Radha Krishna's Leela. She's so astonished. And Brinda Devi said, Chakridaya Rajasi Ranjita Sutra Badha Gokarna Macha Chikura Navavidha Karna Seyam Kuta Pravara Vibrama Kushalani Radhadi Gisabata Vairajitam Jigaya Brinda Devi, the goddess of the forest of Brindavan, with great astonishment, seeing all the various cosmetics in different places on the flowers. She said, Oh, it seems that just yesterday, hmm? Chakrida Yara Jasi, that this girl, Brashubanu Nandini, was just a toddler, a baby, crawling playing in the dust of the courtyard of Brishubhanu Maharaj. Hmm? Chakrida hmm? Yara Jasi Ranjita Sutra Badha and her hair, now her hair is very long, hmm? all the way down past her waist, but then her hair was not long enough to make a veini, to make a braid. <coughs> so it was bound in pigtails like this. <coughs> hmm? <laughs> Because she's a little girl. So, mm, Ranjita mm, Sutra Badha, uh, her hair was tied with a red uh, sutra, red uh, thread, in two pigtails like this, and the pigtails go karna matcha chikura. How long are they? Only as long as the ears of a calf. <laughs> you know, in India, or a cow, they, they have ears, and the ears are fall down like this and they're flapping around. <laughs> so Radhika is a little girl and she has pigtails and they're like falling over like over her face going here and there when she's moving just like the ears of a cow. Never bit the karna and her ears were just freshly pierced. Never bit the karna. That means you could still see the turmeric and the ghee that a mother had put on the ear so that the wound of the first ear piercing would uh, heal very nicely. And never bit the karna. Oh, it was just yesterday that Radhika, her ears were still stained with the turmeric and ghee to heal her newly pierced ears. And she kept going up to a mirror and look, <laughs> looking, and her pigtails were going like this. And she's looking and trying to see because it's new. It's a novelty. Now she's got earrings. How do they swing? How do they look? <laughs> she's turning her head here. And there. Huh? <laughs> huh? But now what happened? She became a Kishori. She grew up so fast. Seyam kuta pabara vibrama kaushalani. How did she become so artistic and expert in vibrama? Vibra you know what vibrama means? It means so many things. Move the eyebrows. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> How to glance and stand in a very flirtatious way. <laughs> hmm? And all, all these things, all, and all the arts of, of the amorous arts, 
How suddenly? From where did her expertise arise in all the amorous arts? Brenda Davy is saying as she looks at the arrangements of the petals. Smaravillasi <clears> Totalpe. <throat> She became so expert that Krishna cannot be defeated by anyone. By seeing the arrangements of petals, it's understood that she has defeated Sri Krishna in the Surata Samhar, in the battle of love. <laughs> so, in this way, Su Madura Dwani Kori Jata Sakhi Gan. When the Sakis, Lalita Sakhi, Brinda Devi, Rupa Manjari, and the parts are speaking, and all the words are full of rasa, but not direct. Everything is sumadura dhvani kari. In the madura dhvani. So Radha Krishna have come outside, and they sit upon the Ratnavedi, a jeweled platform. Kushumita Sarobare Kamla Hilola. And outside, a gentle breeze is blowing and causing the lotus flowers in the Jamuna and in the lakes to tremble and carrying the, their fragrance. So now, Radha Krishna outside, and just now they'll have to return to their homes. But just to make sure that there's no obstacle, that there's no hitch, that they don't get seen or discovered on the way. Then Lalita Saki comes and Lalita Saki is doing Arti. Arti means, because a general person who is in Aishwarya, they do Arti to the deity, they have so many ideas. Supreme Lord is the creator of the universe, earth, water, fire, air and ether. So I'm offering the incense because fragrance is the quality of earth. And I'm offering the deeps because the, that is fire and water and like this. And air with the fan. Like, so this is, people think about Arti in this sense. But in the Vedic culture, arti means that we are performing this auspicious ritual. That whatever difficulty or problem may come in your life, may you not face that. Let it come to me and not to you. Hmm? So family, like Madhya Yashoda offers arti to Krishna when he comes back in the evening from taking the cows to grace. You think Madhya Shosa, I am worshipping you with all the elements. <laughs> like, you know, you should so try to understand that arti has the loving dimension of may you be happy and let all whatever calamity may fall upon you, I'll take it on my head. Mm -hmm. So in this way, Lalita Saki and all the Sakis, uh, Lalita Saki is leading the arti and this is Mangalatik. And then, uh, and they are singing Chanjara Kamsara Ganta Shankarata The conch shell is blowing, the cartels are playing Mangalamridanga Baje Paramarasa And just as that pastime was appearing in the heart of the Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj, a devotee in the temple, Ganta, he rang the bell, ding ding. That's time everyone should go to the temple room now. And his samadhi when he was chanting Japa before Mangalatik, his samadhi was broken. And then he came back into external consciousness. So in that verse we mentioned earlier, that's where he goes in internal consciousness. And in this verse he comes back out to the external consciousness. Then, Mangala Arati Kari Bhakate Raga He comes into the temple room and he's doing Mangalati along, among the devotees. Abhaga Keshava Kohe Nama Sankirtan Thinking Abhaga I am so unfortunate Because I lost my seva <laughs> <laughs> eh? My spurti was broken And I lost my Abhaga Keshava Kohe Nam Sankirtan So now he's chanting the holy names And as he's chanting all the holy names And seeing the vigra of Radha and Krishna Seeing the chamaras The chamara being waved mm. And the all the paraphernalia being offered, these are all the Uddipana that he was seeing in, the, in his internal consciousness. And so seeing that Uddipana, it's stimulating the ecstasy, and he's going back into internal consciousness with Harinam Sankirtan. Like this. So, if one is under the guidance of Brajrasik Vaishnavas, one's whole sadhana becomes adjusted to be focused towards the sadhya, the goal of life. Hmm? 
Otherwise, one will be chanting, hearing, remembering, and just not going where to go. Where am I going? Ayodhya, Dwarka, Mathura, Vrindavan, Sakiras, Madhu, Maduras, Vatsalya. What's, what's going on here? Huh? It's an aimless practice. So the aimless practice is not called sadhana. Because sadhana is kriti sadhya bhavet sadhya bhavasa sadhana bida. Nitya siddhasya bhavasa prakatya mridisa. That hearing and chanting remembering which is performed for the specific purpose of the manifesting within the heart one particular nitya siddha mood, the mood of one nitya siddha, eternal associate of Sri Krishna, should come to me. Then it's called sadhana. Otherwise it is only an abhas. A, a, a semblance or imitation of real sadhana. So in this way, uh, try to be in good association, like-minded, and in that like-minded association, our conception of who we are, what is our goal, and our practice becomes gradually refined and focused on the goal of life. Radha Dasya. Gaur Premananda. Hey.